Shalom, this is your arc. Yah is magnified, coming back with another informative video. The title of this video is, Now What? So with that being said, let's get to it. Oh yeah, but as always, before I move further, as you all know, I must state for the record, I'm not a lawyer, I do not practice law, and I do not pretend to. All my videos are for informational and educational purposes only. They're all facts and all truth. Nothing more, nothing less. So with that being said, let's get to it. So now, uh, as you all can see, um, this is a New Hampshire state representative. His name is Dick Marble, right? He's on trial for um, for two tickets, I think, driving on a suspended license. And uh, I can't remember the second ticket, but they're going to mention it in the video. But basically, this New York, I mean, this New Hampshire state representative, you know, he's standing on his square. He challenged jurisdiction. He challenged that they had jurisdiction over a man or over him. And the judge uh, denied his motion to challenge jurisdiction because she perceived that she had jurisdiction over him when all facts and actuality is she don't. But because I guess there's so many people watching and there's people and other people in the courtroom, she don't want to uh, let that be known. But she still, but she would still tell him his remedy after, or to challenge the uh, challenge the administrative order, which is complete fraud because an administrator cannot make an order. The only thing an administrator can do is make recommendations. They can't make an order. Only judges can make an order, and we know there is no judge. They're all administrators. They're all in, they're all in administrative capacity. So now, with that being said, let's check out this video, and uh. Get some more understanding. Please rise. Congress Court is now in session. Judge Pat presiding. Good afternoon. Please be seated. State versus A. Marple. Good afternoon. This is scheduled for a trial on two charges. The class B misdemeanor charge of driver's license prohibition and in the violation charge of driving after suspension. Mr. Marco, I'd like to once again make the offer uh, to have you come sit here. Uh, I know that you are concerned with waiving jurisdiction, but if you're more comfortable up here so you can spread out your papers, certainly um, I would allow you to do that. And I know that you're reserving your rights to appeal by orders with respect to jurisdiction. Uh, is the state ready to proceed? Okay, so as you all notice, he did not cross the bar. Why? Because he's challenging jurisdiction. But let's continue. Magistrate. Yes. I am here under threat to rest and coercion. I'm not here because of an order. Because you as a magistrate cannot make an order. You can only administer ministerial duties. You have no jurisdiction to judge your own jurisdiction. I'll give you the citations on it. But we're going to review something. And this is something that took place with my original, which I put in the evidence before our first meeting. You refuse to read it. You refuse to accept it. I'm going to bring it in again right now. And this is the federal government's public law 719, which mandates your compliance with the Uniform Commercial Code. You have not done so. You have denied me of it. I gave you part two. There's two of them here. Two of them here right now. Affidavit. So again, since the United States is a corporation, then all their laws are um, underneath contracts. That's it. They're UCC laws. But every law on this earth comes from contracts. Not one law on this earth. Even the most high law is contract. Okay? He made a contract and gave the children of Israel an offer. The children of Israel accepted that offer. And said they are willing to do whatever the most high said they would do. Or ask the ask of them to do. That he mentioned to them. So now, the Most High gave them an offer through Moses. Moses told them everything the Most High said. The children of Israel said, all that the Most High said, we will do. So they accepted the Most High's offer. 
all contracts. That's it. That's all. Okay? The law of contracts is on the land and on the sea. That's the original law. Okay? That's the only law. So again, if contracts are the only law and everything in America operates on a continuous series of contracts, then the best way to get from these laws is to operate contracts. Okay? So learn how to create your own contracts and you can wiggle your way up out of this situation. But let's continue listening in to, the, uh, to this trial. Okay, so that's you all remedy right there. That's one remedy. So now, if you all get an unfavorable void order from an administrative acting as a judge, then you file the appeal. Okay, that's what's next. The appeal is next. So if you get a bad ruling from the lower court, don't be upset. File your appeal. That's it. Take it to a higher court. Challenge the same thing. Okay, it all starts with jurisdiction. If they can't prove jurisdiction, they have no case. Okay, and when I say jurisdiction over you, the living man. Okay, but now let's continue listening in, and the judge gonna even say it herself. Hey, if you don't like this so-called ro- void ruling, then follow the proper procedures for the seek remedy in the appeal court or the supreme court, whatever court you want to appeal. You want to file your appeal to, but let's continue. I have absolute right to appeal my decision. You have no decision because you don't have any jurisdiction. I'm going to read into the records if there is such a record. And yes, he is right. She do not have a decision because she's an administrative. She don't have jurisdiction over top of him to make a decision. They can only make recommendations. That's it. That's all. But let's continue. Thank you. 
to you. There is no reason for yelling. You can ha continue to have what I would call a responsible and, and professional discussion. And my request to you, I have two requests. One is that when I wish to speak, that you give me that courtesy. And when you wish to speak, I will do the same. As long as we continue to be discussing what is relevant to today's case. If there's no relevance to today's case, could you both have jurisdiction? And I understand that that is your position, but I, I would You not can't have some jurisdiction. You're denied not. that. The courts have denied you that. Well, you don't have that prerogative. Mr. Markle, please, please allow me to speak. You have made your position clear. You have denied me my procedural due process rights as an Article 15 of the Constitution, yeah. which the demands you show me the affidavit that makes me liable for what you're assuming jurisdiction that you don't have. Hey, Mr. Parker, I want to see it. The Will you produce the document Mr. that has my signature to give you jurisdiction? Will you produce that? Will you, please Will you produce the document? Mr. Marco, I'm going to ask you again to let me respond. The remedy for the position you have taken which is that you disagree that I have jurisdiction. The remedy under the same constitution that you're relying on is to appeal my decision, or as you say, my non-decision, to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. That is the procedure that the New Hampshire Constitution allows when someone disagrees with the judge's order. So what I So as you all heard, the judge said it out of her own mouth. Okay? If you go in there Challenging jurisdiction, you know, and a magistrate try to give you a bogus ruling. When you file out appeal in the appeal court, you will find remedy in that court. Why? Because they know that they are in administrative capacity. They cannot make an order. It's void. Okay, but let's continue. What I am saying to you in response to your discussion is that procedurally to get where you want to go, which is to continue to challenge this court or anyone else's court's jurisdiction, the next step is to have the trial. You may not even be found guilty. If you are found guilty, then you have the right to appeal both the issue of the jurisdiction and a finding of guilty. Procedurally, that is how the next steps go. When you talk about the Uniform Commercial Code, that has no bearing on the, these types of cases. And I believe that I... Now, she just stated that the Uniform Commercial Code does not have no bearing on these types of cases. That's ridiculous. Because as I stated before, everything in the, in the United States works on a continuous series of contracts. Everything. Even her position as the administrator. She signed the contract to do that. The bailiff signed the contract. Everything's in contracts. Everybody in there signed some type of contract to work underneath the corporation of the United States. So again, it's all uniform commercial. But let's continue. I maintain that I've made clear my two previous orders on the motions that you requested that it is the continued belief that there is jurisdiction. Do you want to allow you receiving an affidavit which incorporated the return of your purported judgment? Oh no, I received that. That's and did you did you read what it says on there? I absolutely did, sir. And you know what the Supreme Court said, and I'm talking about Justice Grimes in Volume 108, New Hampshire, 386, which was decided 1229 or 67. Did you read that? I read everything. And what does it say? Look, I read everything that you, said, that you sent. And in the last batch of the things that you sent, you were referring to the commercial, the uniform commercial code and how a motor vehicle is a commercial good. And what I tried to explain to you, if you give me the opportunity again, is that those issues are not relevant to the charge of whether you operated a motor vehicle while your license was suspended or not. So and then she said the Uniform Commercial Code do not apply in this court, but she's talking about the driving license, which is another contract 
which only operates in commerce. So again, it's one big sham. But sh but I I'm glad that the um New Hampshire state representative is doing his thing and he's showing everyone as well that man is one big fraud and one big sham. China's jurisdiction and yes. I'm going to also play a video of him doing the straw man and he's mentioning the straw man in court. The judge got up and left. Okay, but let's continue. That is where we have a fundamental disagreement, which you will have again ample opportunity to appeal to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. No, that's already been done. The Supreme Court has settled the issue in what I just quoted, where Justice Bryant states very specifically that RSA, which are compelled to perform under RSA 382A, 9-109, defines the automobile as consumer goods. Consumer goods do not have to be registered. Consumer goods do not have to have a, quote, license, unquote, in order to travel in consumer goods. There's no taxation. You're talking about extortion. Extortion from the people who do not know that there is a difference between an automobile and an automobile. I gave you all that information. You refused to accept it. It's all documented. The Supreme Court's already made the judgment. So don't talk about appeal because there's no appeal for something that doesn't exist. Well, now, you won't give us the last time I had the prosecutor over here deliver what was purportedly a license. It's not a license. It is a photo ID that I purchased. And I put TDC, front and direction to work. That's not a license. It's my property. And the criminal conversion, T-O-N-V-E-R-S-I-O, depriving me of my property, which also has a contract with a very favor I sort of agree with both because as he stated she can't make an order you know so it's, so her order is void and she's saying that okay if my order is void then just file an appeal and seek your remedy so I see where both of them coming from but the uh, the representative for New Hampshire he's correct you know he's more correct than she is but he can still seek remedy in the appeals court. So let's continue. Legislatively, and by the New Hampshire Constitution, that's how your rights allow you to proceed. So what I'm asking you to allow the rest of this proceeding to go as it is required to do, you are not giving up 
up any of your rights because you will have kept them all for, for appeal purposes, and you will be able to file a pleading and an appeal with the New Hampshire Supreme Court arguing what you have argued unsuccessfully with me. And maybe the New Hampshire Supreme Court will agree with you. But that, we have to get through this proceeding first before you can go to that next step. That's the laws that you and your fellow legislators have made, and that's what the New Hampshire Constitution says. So yeah, I know what the Constitution says, and that's why I'm here. That's why my constituents elected me, for me to protect them from the adverse and greed of the corporation that you met. Now, I checked with Dunn and Bradstreet, and Dunn and Bradstreet defined you as a mere employee of a bankrupt municipal corporation doing business as a Sixth Circuit under the parentage of the United Hampshire Supreme Court, which Tony Bradstreet and the others also, the other companies that compete with Tony Bradstreet, to fire you as a private profit making corporation, as you did, the Supreme Court. Under, under a you all heard it. He put it out. He put it right out there. They are a private corporation and contracts underneath the state. Plain and simple. That's all it is. It's contracts. They all in contracts. It's a corporation. It's a business operating underneath the Uniform Commercial Code, masquerading around as if they have some type of power or jurisdiction over top of a living man. They don't. But let's continue. Contract to provide judicial services to another bankrupt corporation, which is the state of New Hampshire. There is no lawful money in circulation. That goes back to what I just showed you here, the Tax Lien Act of 1966, which apparently you don't understand or you're going to avoid the fact that you're compelled, you are compelled to operate under the Uniform Commercial Code. You are not doing so. Therefore, you're in default. You're in default of your obligation and your subscribed contract to obey the Constitution, and you are subject to RSA 92 colon 2 for violating your oath. Now, I've had enough. I ask that you recuse yourself from this because there's sufficient evidence to show your animosity toward me and spreading this out. To, to, to what? Justify the salaries that are being paid to these corp employees. Right, There's well, going to be a stop to it. Are you going to recuse yourself? I ask you that. I am not going to recuse You're not going to recuse yourself. And let me put, put my reasons on the record. Please, again, I just ask for the courtesy of doing that. I, I do not believe there is any valid reason for me to recuse myself. I have. I believe that I have been fair and impartial. I can continue to be fair and impartial. Um, we are scheduled for a trial today, and I want to let you know that the trial is going to occur today. I would urge you to participate in the trial. I'm not participating in something that cannot exist. It is a total fraud. You have committed fraud by your silence to two affidavits. You've committed fraud by denying me my procedural due process rights under Article 15. And I would like to submit, just for your own, there are two pages here. Is there a bailiff here? What is it that you have? Three decisions after the Texas Act of 1966, which everything prior to that is null and void. That's what Justice Grimes in the Supreme Court case defined the automobile as consumer goods. You will have to say, you refuse to accept this? Do you refuse to accept this? I'm trying to clarify. I'm going to ask you one more time. Do you refuse to accept this? I am not refusing to accept it. I'm trying to clarify whether it's something I already have because I believe you may have filed it previously. Please, I am asking you to be a little more respectful here. I am trying to help this situation not hurt it. So if you can tell me what the title of that document is, I will check, but I think I may already have it. If you'd like to tell me what it is, I will double check. All right, well, if you don't, I believe uh, what I intend to do, Mr. Markle, is go forward with the trial today. I'm going to take your unwillingness to participate.
participate in the trial as you, you are voluntarily absenting yourself from the trial. The trial is going to go ahead, uh, and you're welcome to stay. I would urge you to participate. Again, you may be found not guilty. You may have, you have the right to present any evidence that you want about the situation. But if you, do, if you choose not to, you, you also have the right not to testify. But I, we're going to go forward with the trial today. You yourself mentioned that this has been carried on and going on for a long time. That was because I first wanted to give you the courtesy of thoroughly evaluating your motions. I have done that, and we're going to proceed forward now. Go ahead and call your first witness, please. State calls now you were asking me to participate in the fraud, is that correct? Well, I don't define it as a fraud. Well, did you, did you answer the two affidavits? The Your state Honor. calls Master Patrol Officer Padala. Your Honor? I'm sorry, you're not a part of this matter, sir, so... I require an appearance in a special non-representative matter, please. I, you're too late for this piece right now. Your Honor, I request that you swear to please. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and the whole truth? Okay, so I'm not going to go over the whole video, but as you all can see, he's not going to participate in the fraud, you know. So even after they make their ruling against him, if they rule against him, you know, if he get a ruling not in his favor, his remedy is in the appeals court. He filed, simply filed an appeal and still challenged the same thing, which is uh, personal jurisdiction. That's it. That's all. So with that being said, though, that's all I'm going to do for today. Um, you all need my help. Hit me up in my email at yahismagnified at gmail.com. Uh, as you all can see, you know, it's a fight. You have a New Hampshire state representative in the fight standing there for all to see. Okay? So for those who don't believe, hey, I feel sorry for you. Those who do believe, y'all know what time it is. So with that being said, you all be blessed. Shalom.